So, it's been a while. To be honest, there hasn't been much to post about. Between uni, robotics competitions, and DHL doing the best they can to make my packages as late as possible, here we are with a new project. Now, where does one go after spending one and a half years learning about and then making a custom tool changing 3D printer from scratch? To old faithful projects, of course. And with me, that means either dumb ways to die by high voltage capacitors and Tesla coils, or non economically viable electromagnetic weaponry, because that's what gets the middle school excited when they're getting into electronics. Now, don't get me wrong, I love high voltage shenanigans as much as the next guy. My first proper project was a spark gap Tesla coil with flyback transformers from old CRT TVs and homemade high voltage capacitors made from projector film. However, if I were to light even the smallest DRS CC in my university apartment, I would get kicked out faster than my homemade capacitors exploding. And also, I'm assuming you have read the title, so coil gun it is. Me and coil guns have a bit of a history. So far, I've made two of them. One that rectifies the 230 volt AC from the wall to 320 volt DC and then charges a capacitor, which it then dumps through a thyristor through a coil to fire a small nail once and then needing to recharge. That one I made in middle school, and yes, I was a weird kid. And then, instead of studying for exams to get me into uni, I made this, which I called CBA Mark II. It is an 8 stage coil gun that uses two 3S LiPos in series to push current through all the stages, which are controlled by these MOSFETs and an Arduino Mega that sequences the coils based on the photo gates after each stage. This project had a lot of firsts for me. The first time I used a LiPo battery in a project, the first time I used 3D printing in a project, and the first time I made a gun that shoots itself if programmed wrong. Thank you, Serial Print. Now, I could talk about this project for a while, but we're here to talk about the next kid on the block. So, let's talk a bit about the CBA Mark III. So, what will we make today? Well, a coil gun, but what's different? Well, in general, there are two ways to make a coil gun. Choice 1 involves using a battery and a voltage step up booster to get the 20 ish volts from the battery and turn to about 400 volts to charge a big capacitor and then discharge it through a coil with the use of a thyristor or an IGBT if you're feeling fancy. And if you want to make one with multiple stages, then you need the capacitor per stage and that gets heavy and expensive real quick. This type of coil gun is easily the best in power output not because of efficiency, but because of the sheer energy the capacitors can push through the coils. However, they are single shot only, because after every shot you have to charge the capacitors again, which normally takes between 5 to 10 seconds, depending on the capacitor size. Now, the other popular way to make a coil gun is to skip the boost circuit and the capacitor and simply use high C rated lithium polymer batteries and essentially short them through the coil with the use of either a MOSFET or an IGBT. This method is easier to implement and allowing coil gun to essentially fire full auto due to no capacitor charging time. However, there are downsides with this method. Say, if we want to keep the coil gun portable, then we have to limit the number of batteries, which means we will never reach nowhere near the power that the capacitor based coil guns do. So, we must rely on high efficiency designs to reach the desirable kinetic energy of the output. Another advantage of this design is due to the much lower voltage of the batteries, it is safer to work with compared to the capacitors which have enough power to stop your heart if you make a mistake. Now, let's talk a bit more about efficiency. Efficiency in coil guns essentially means the kinetic energy of the projectile after leaving the barrel divided by the energy which was consumed by the coils. Most coil guns have an efficiency of 4 to 7%, which might seem terrible, because it is. These systems are very lossy, and their incredible inefficiency is what makes them non-viable to be used as actual weapons. If a coil gun were to have 100% efficiency, we could make a coil gun that could rival powder-based weaponry while being completely silent and having no moving parts. Now, that's enough yapping about theory. Let's talk about the coil gun, which we'll be looking at today. Recently, coil guns have been popping up on YouTube that use a capacitor at a lower voltage which they charge in between shots to make it fire sequentially. As far as I know, the first coil gun to use this hybrid design are the coil guns sold by ArcFlash Labs. They make some of the best coil guns around and their designs are incredible and they have made great advancements in the space. So, 
A hybrid coal gun is what will we make today. So, let's talk a bit about components. The most important part in a hybrid coal gun system is the capacitor. So, after a bit of research, I went with a 63 volt capacitor with the capacity of 330 millifarads. No, not microfarads, millifarads. For now, I will use a current limited bench supply to charge it, but that will change later. Wink wink. The coal that we will be using here is 22 turns at 6 layers of 1mm wire, which results to about 150 milliohms across the coil, and with a voltage of 30 volts, that means 200 amps, and with a final of 44.9 that I'm planning to use, that's about 300 amps. Now I have glossed over some pretty important math here, but if I see there is more interest in this topic, I will make a video explaining all the math here and why the values are what they are, as well as some more basic and a bit more advanced theory about coil guns, but for now, let's keep the snooze fist to a minimum. The last and most important component of a coil gun is the stage switch. So let's talk a bit more about the PCBs here. Now to switch the coil, all you need is an electric switch, like a MOSFET or an IGBT. Here I have used four MOSFETs in parallel, which are controlled by a gate driver, which in turn is controlled by an external main control board. Present here is also a connector, which connects to a photodiode and an RLED, which together form a photo gate to detect when a projectile has left the stage to turn it off and turn on the next one. This PCB here is V2 of the switchboard, and this here is V1. V1 was much bigger due to every stage having a microcontroller which would allow the stages to talk to each other via chain link and would minimize the wiring, but due to the size and complexity this was removed in V2. The other major changes is the RC snubber circuit here that was not present in V1. Quick nerd talk. When you enter a coil it creates a magnetic field. With me so far? Good. That magnetic field doesn't reach a saturation point instantly, it takes some time to reach it. Now, when you turn off the power to the coil, the magnetic field collapses faster than it was created, which leads to a rise in the voltage across the coil to compensate for the magnetic flux change due to Lenz's law. Now, the problem arises because the voltage across the coil is much higher than the one that created it, by a huge amount. That effect is called inductive spiking. My coil with no protections and a 20 volt input can reach a voltage of 300 volts for a very small amount of time, which then oscillates away. The MOSFETs I have chosen have a drain source breakdown voltage of about 150 volts, so anything higher than that can kill them, so we must protect them. To do that we can use two methods. First, a flyback diode which is connected in reverse polarity so it won't conduct when power goes through the coil and will conduct to short the coil and dissipate any inductive spiking. Now, this works great, but for big coils the residual energy can still be high enough to reach unsafe levels. So the next protection is an RC snubber circuit, which takes the energy created by the inductive spike and charges this big capacitor here through this resistor instead of going through the, and killing all the MOSFETs. So that's enough talking for now. Let's test it. For projectiles, we will use the 7mm nails cut to size to fit the coil, while also triggering the photo gate just when the projectile reaches the middle of the coil. Now, as we all have heard before, the difference between science and screwing around is measuring and writing things down. And to help with that, we have a chronograph here, which consists of two photo gates and a Raspberry Pi Pico that measures the time the projectile took to get from one gate to the other and uses that time to calculate the speed of the projectile in meters per second based on the distance between the two gates. This is very useful in testing changes in the coil, the power input and any other parameters that can affect the speed. So to begin, we must first insert a projectile in the coil and then proceed with charging the capacitor. After that, we can use an Arduino program which runs the main board here, which for now does nothing, nothing more than control the stages and provide the necessary voltages. Now, with the capacitor charged and the power supply disconnected, we can set the system to arm mode and then fire it. After the test, we can look at the projectile speed on the chronograph and see the MOSFET drain and gate voltage on the scope here. So, let's do some tests with different voltages and see how that affects the output speed.
Now, to be honest, this video is a bit rushed. That's because I've been busy with a lot of things, as I mentioned in the intro, but I wanted to get a video out, so I decided to go with this, even though I would have liked to be further along the project than I am right now. That also means that this is no way the last time you'll be seeing a coil gun from me, as this project has a bright future, and if I get everything I want working together, it'll be one of a kind project that will hopefully be awesome, considering it might be the last project I do before I'm done with uni. So, if you like this video and want to see more, please consider subscribing. I hope you guys enjoy this new project as much as I do, and if you do, then hopefully I'll see you in the next one. But for now, goodbye!